this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use burst mode on your Hero 3 to make an action sequence like the one shown here. I'll be using GIMP, which is a free photo editing software you can download for PC or Mac. Uh, if you'd prefer to see a similar tutorial using Photoshop CS6, you can click the link and go watch that one. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to set up your camera to shoot a burst sequence. When your camera is in burst mode, it actually takes a series of photos all with one click of the shutter button, which is this one. We can then use those photos to merge together into one photo and get the cool effect that I'm going to show you later in this tutorial. I'm using the Hero 3 Black Edition here, so if you're using the Silver or White Editions, the settings will be slightly different, but I'll give you some recommended settings when we get into the setup menu. So the first thing you do is push the front button to turn your camera on. And when the menu comes up, push the front button again to scroll through to the burst icon, which is this one. And you're going to see the settings here. Mine's set at 12 megapixels and 30 pictures over one second. I'm going to actually space that out a bit more and make it 30 pictures over two seconds, just because that's a little bit close together and a little quick for the sequence I'm going to shoot. So we do that by pressing the front button until you get to the wrench. Push the top button to select. Push the front button again so you get to the burst icon and it shows the setting there. Push the top button to select and push the front button to go down to 30 frames per 2 seconds or 30 frames per 3 seconds depending on what you're shooting. If you're using the silver edition you can shoot 10 photos over 1 second or 10 photos over 2 seconds and if you're using the white edition you can shoot 3 photos in 1 second. So push the top button to select and you'll see that it's changed and you can push the top button, you can hold it down and go back to exit out of the setup menu. So it'll shortcut out of there. And then when it's back in the main menu, it's in video mode. So push the front button to get back to burst mode. And now your camera is ready to shoot a sequence. Once you've shot your sequence and transferred the files over to your computer, sort through the sequence and pick out some photos that you think you want to use for the action sequence. Uh, I chose six photos and I started with the first one of the sequence all the way to the last photo of the sequence. I shot 30 frames, which I could have actually spread out a little more because I ended up cutting out three or four frames in between each picture. Um, but I wanted to get some distance so that he travels across the frame as I add the layer masks. So he'll start here and by the last frame he'll end here. Um, save these photos in a different folder all on their own to your desktop so that you know where they are. And if you're on a Mac especially you, when you're using GIMP it has a hard time finding the external drives. So just save it on your desktop for simplicity. And the next step is to open up GIMP. So I'm going to go to applications and open GIMP. Now that you have GIMP open Go and open the first photo of the sequence by going File, Open, and on your desktop, find the folder that you just made. Click on Action Sequence Tutorial is what I called it. And I'm going to click on the first photo only right now. And then I'm going to click Open. It's going to open up that first file of the photo. Now I want to add the rest of the photos as layers on top of that. So I'm going to go up here and go File, Open as Layers. If you do file open as layers from the beginning, it actually won't pile, won't stack them. So now select the rest of the photos. I just clicked on the first one. I'm going to hold down shift and go to the last one. It'll select the rest of them. And now I can just click open. And now it's layering the photos on top of that. So each one is a layer. Now the photos are all imported as layers. You can see over here on the right side, there's one, two, three, four, five, six layers, one for each photo. I want to reverse the order of the layers so that the first image on the right side of the screen is on top and that'll be covering up the ones as he's getting further away. So I'm just going to go layer, stack, and reverse layer order. That's going to switch the order of the layers here. So now this one is on top. You can see GIMP operates a little more slowly than Photoshop if you ever use Photoshop. Uh, the next thing we need to do is add a layer mask to each layer. So adding a layer mask actually blocks out this image and then we're going to bring back in a certain part of it. So to do a layer mask, go up here to the top menu bar and go layer, mask, add layer mask. 
And here this little dialog comes up. It's behind the toolbox here for me. But you want to click black, and that's going to block out the whole layer. So I'm going to click black to make that whole layer disappear. Click add. Now I see this layer will disappear. And you're going to see the one that's below it. Now I can see that that's going to overlap a bit, but um, I'm going to work on it anyways and see if it'll work out. So the first thing to do now that we've got the layer mask started is go over here and select the paintbrush tool. And you can see here the size of it is really small. If you look on the picture, you can see a little circle there. I'm going to make that bigger. So now that we've got the brush size at 150 around there, um, we need to make sure that white is the foreground color because white is going to color back in the subject. So you can see that black here is the foreground now and white is the background. If you just click this little arrow, it'll switch them because we're going to be using black and white often here. So now white is the foreground color. And I'm just going to go where the subject was and start painting him back in. Okay, so I'm just going to keep coloring him back in. You can actually adjust the hardness a little bit. It's not bringing him in that quick. You could go over here and type in 100 under the brush here, and that'll just bring it in a little quicker. And just keep coloring him in. You want to, might want to get a shadow. You see that one's pretty close to the layer underneath. This one is kind of blocking it, and with the bike tire, it's a little bit complicated. So I could actually just turn off this layer that's underneath over here on the right side where the layers are. Just click the little eyeball. That layer will disappear. And then we'll see the next layer. That one looks like it lines up a little better. It's got space in between. So we've got the layer mask where he's all back in the picture here. So now we can just go to the next layer and do the same thing. So we click on the layer, and then go layer, mask, add layer mask. And the dialog comes up over here on the left side. I'm going to make sure it's black again and do add. This is going to disappear now. And we're going to want to color it back in with white again. So I just click there. I'm painting over him to bring him back into the photo. I'm going to, I could go under this one here because this layer is on top. This, the top layers won't get covered if you paint them. But you don't want to erase this layer because that one's underneath. So you just got to remember that you can go over, you can paint over the layers above and they won't get affected, but you can't paint over the layers underneath. So I'm just bringing him back in the photo here and I'll get a shadow too. If you need to zoom in and out to get more detail and see what's going on, uh, you can go down here to the bottom and you can click, it's at 25% now you can see, uh, it's really small to see, but you can also click like 50% and go in. Um, you're supposed to be able to click plus. It doesn't work on my Mac. Uh, it is open source software and it's free, so not everything works perfect for me. But um, on a PC it should work. And you can use the minus to zoom back out. Or you can use the same window down here and go back to 25%. I'm going to go into 50%. Our layer mask is set to white right now, so it's revealing, which means if you go over the layer that's underneath, it's actually going to erase that layer because it's showing this layer that we're on and that covers up the one below. If you have things that are close together and you accidentally cover up too much of what's below, you can switch the colors here and use black to edit this layer mask that you're working on so you reveal again you're essentially erasing this part of layer mask so it doesn't that's showing so it doesn't cover up what's below it. So you can see that his foot came back and but I affected the shadow bit here so I'm going to switch it back to white by clicking the arrow over here and I can just bring back that shadow. Okay, now you want to do the same thing for the rest of the layers. So I went ahead and finished up the other layer mask on the next layer below that one and I ended up actually turning off another layer because it was uh, too crunched in between these two images. They were overlapping too much so I just turned that layer off and on the bottom layer you don't need to do a layer mask. So this is how the image looks with all the layer masks applied. Um, because it was backlit and contrasty. I'd like to adjust the colors a little bit and regardless you'll probably want to change to adjust the colors um, on your photos because they come out a little bit dull from the GoPro. Um, so the first thing to do that is to flatten the image. So go over here where the layers are and right click and go down to the bottom and do flatten image. That's going to flatten all these layers into one. And now to adjust the colors we need to duplicate that layer and work on the layer that we duplicate. So right click again and go here duplicate layer 
or you can click this little icon here. And um, now we're going to go to mode and go uh, soft light. Make sure you're make sure you're on this top layer that you just duplicated. And the soft light made it really contrasty and brought out some richer colors here. Um, it's a little bit too contrasty for this image because it is backlit and his face kind of disappears. So what you can do is adjust the opacity down a little bit just to make it a little less contrasty but keep some of the rich colors. That looks pretty good at 42 percent. So then I'd go up here to colors and adjust the brightness and contrast a little bit to see if that helps by popping the brightness just a little bit on it and contrast. Could turn it down a little bit just see what it see how it affects your photo and see what look you're going for and after you make those changes click OK and you can also adjust the colors a little bit, the saturation just slightly, don't overdo it because you don't want your colors to get out of whack but um, you could maybe boost it up, I usually don't go much past 10 but it adds just a little bit of more blues in there um, so I'm going to click OK on that one so the last thing you'd want to do probably is crop the image to get rid of any unwanted areas. So you can just go up to the crop tool here. It looks like the razor blade. And you can keep it at like a fixed aspect ratio so you keep it the same as the original photo's proportions. And just um, crop it however you'd like the photo to look. And stretch the corners. Move it around and pick which, if you want to crop out any parts of the photo, you can do that here. And once you're happy with your selection, just click enter. Okay, after you've cropped your image, uh, to save it, you just right click over here on the layers, you want to flatten it again. So flatten image, and now you'll see there's just one layer. And you can go up to here, the top menu, click on file, export, and you can name it whatever you want to, action, sequence and choose your file type. Uh, it's probably best to go with JPEG for a file size that compresses it so it's a little bit smaller. So just pick the image type there and choose where you want to save it to. I'm going to save it to the desktop and export. And there you go. There you have an action sequence using a free photo editing software.